Hi all, welcome to another Chess24 Banter Blitz. It's approaching 11.30. Before we get into the games, let's have a look at this amazing voucher code, King's Crusher, King's plural. You get 15% off if you go to chess24.com slash premium. So you can get to challenge even the world chess champion, Magnus Carlsen, who's fabulous at many time controls, especially Blitz. So you get to play some Blitz against them. Incredible experience. Other grandmasters, international masters, celebrities, and even bunnies like me, you can challenge. You just turn up 20 to 30 minutes beforehand, and then you go on to our challenges uh, list. So I'm going to go to that challenge list now. So I'm switching over. Tell me if audio and visual is okay on the chat there. Okay, Alakine, Alexander Alakine first. <laughs> okay. I'll play. Um, B3, my little pet B3, I think. Oh, let me play over there and mute that. It's a three minute game. I quite like the dark square grip here already. Especially because he's played E6, it kind of makes it a bit easier to get a dark square grip. And I love this sort of uh, like reverse Dutch defense strategy. Get the queen over. Already, you know, rook g8, bishop takes, is winning a piece. You know, I've won so many games from this position uh, recently, especially in bullet. And I, I seem to have been vindicated. I've seen a lot of GMs being using, have been using b3 on the first move in, in faster time controls. Okay, so here, um, the bishop going back is not something I'm uh, terrified by. Okay, so here, uh, knight b5 is annoying, maybe knight e5 first. But knight b5 to bear in mind. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Can I not just take here and there's a check, disruptive check, or not? He's got c, yeah, is there rook f7? No, okay. Let's try and keep a pace here. Can I double on the F file? Or threaten uh, rook f7? Let's threaten rook f7 for a laugh. For bishop e6. Will he spot that? I could also double after. <laughs> That's the cheeky threat. Oh, he's got bishop d7 after. It doesn't even work. He's got bishop d7. Okay. All right. Enough of the nonsense. Actually, I left d2 hanging there as well. Okay. Uh, all right. Maybe it's not such a great big deal in this position. Yeah, so I wanted to double. I think he's proving his point. Can I get to double again? On the F file. I'm taking over here. That looks nice. Oh, okay. He's squishing my bishop. He's squishing my bishop. And there's also rook d1. Oh, I'm getting scared now. This is getting naughty. Uh, um, and e5 is hanging. Apart from that, everything's brilliant. Okay. Uh, I think I've been killed. I've just been killed positionally. Try and stop rook d1 at least. Oh, I feel killed. A3 to activate the rook. My, it leaves my bishop on c1 dead. This doesn't usually happen to me. I'm going to have to play h3. <laughs> King h2. A3 to try and at least liberate this. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to run into queen d1. That's the issue. Can I at least undermine here? Okay, let him take my queen off. I want to hold c2. Hang on, I'm being daft here. Am I being really daft here? I've always got e4 and bishop f4. This bishop isn't totally doomed. I've just realized a bit too late. The bishop isn't totally uh, doomed. Um. 
but it's unfortunate here unless there's rook a6 I think there might be rook a6 the rescue for rook a8 the, the bishop okay gives him bishop a3 hang on rook b7 there's rook a4 I want to play bishop a3 trying to sort out this bishop issue okay right now bishop b4 coming up well, why don't I just take this guy I didn't even see that before okay do I need the bishop the rook around maybe rookie two I, maybe I shouldn't go over there because he's going to do something horrible. Bishop b4, bishop b4 coming up, king f2. Oh, I think it's getting more peaceful now. King f2, bishop d4. Okay. Now I thought I was in trouble there, positioning. It looked very scary. Oh, Shelly, we don't usually play on the uh, three minute time control. Okay. Okay, bishop c5. I think a6 and bishop a7 coming up. Oh, hang on, has he got 95? Better stop 95. So bishop g4. Try and get him to close the center. I usually play it like this. If yeah, if I give my knight g6, I have queen c8. That's the usual way of the tango that I play it. I'm still reserving my h pawn. So knight g4 coming up. I discovered recently it's a favourite of Tony Miles, the tango. Um, and I've been doing a bit of research. A lot of grandmasters have been on the black side in certain variations. Quite a lot. Sadler, Short, as well as Wiles. It's actually quite interesting. Okay. Right, okay, I'm not doing anything at the moment, am I? But I could play for an f5, for a focal point on f2 anyway. I don't have to commit the rook to nothingness. I mean, f5. So f4 is immediately dangerous. I'm a bit insecure, my little pet system being tested against such a strong opponent, but I guess it's exciting as well. Um, can I just double on the F file soon? The the thing is, there's always a knight g5 here. Yeah, there's always a knight g5. I mean, is it worth even uh, as getting him to play knight g5, maybe? All oh, right, he hasn't. Okay, okay, okay. Well, that's interesting. I, I didn't expect that. M maybe if the other knight's used, it's not as good. I was expecting the other knight to be used. So maybe e4 here is dangerous for knight e5. Let's bring this knight out. Right, bishop takes on knight e5 to f3. Is he going to go for... A, there's going to be a nasty pin on bishop e4, surely. So hold this for a moment. The ninety five to F three. Oh Hang on, he's also got a cheeky C six. Let me just stop his C six tactics. Does it does he take there? Alright, if he ever takes I take the Queen, just make a mental note. All right, knight g6, queen g6. Queen g6 here. Is he going to open up my bishop again? 
b6 trying to break this bishop out it's without a counterpart here as well on f2 e3 it's the bishop without the counterpart I feel I'm mixing business for pleasure here because I've been actually analyzing the tango the last few days like several variations uh, in depth more than I have usually for any other opening recently um this is not over till it's over is it uh oh am I losing material I think I am desperate measures Queen F3, Queen H3, Queen G3, Rook F2. I oh, wouldn't the Queen there. I'm going to be winning the Queen. I thought I was losing a piece, but I think this is crushing. I'm going to be winning the Queen or Queen H4. This Queen H3. Better take the Queen. Oh, I could take the Bishop first. I mean the Rook first. Okay. <laughs> I, I I don't like this game. <laughs> I have to say, at so many levels, I didn't like playing this game. Thanks very much, Shelling. I I because I have been researching it like hard work recently. The tango, I've discovered it it has been a favourite of Tony Miles. It's it's actually quite a dangerous system. I thought um, my friend Paul Georgiou introduced me. I didn't think it was that respectable, but it's actually got quite a lot behind it. Knight uh, C six. Um, I'm doing extensive research at the moment. I, I, I'm telling you guys what I didn't want to tell anyone that I'm working on this tango. Uh, but, you know, given it's come up here, okay, in a high level blitz. But there's so many ideas uh, for dark square play, you wouldn't believe that I've discovered myself, even philosophically. I've, I'm, making, I'm making new points my, myself philosophically, like exchanging off the dark square bishops putting as many pawns on light squares as possible um, you know exchange off points c5 or g5 sometimes bishop g5 sometimes bishop c5 to exchange off the dark square bishops sometimes a totally different move order with knight f6 to encourage c4 which is another pawn on on light squares there's i've just i've just found so many different uh resources recently it's unbelievable So anyway, uh, okay, we're going to have to abort this. I think this has been more than five seconds. All right, let's go on to the next game. Oh, okay. You see, there's a system in here which is not the Nimzovich way. Even though it's the Nimzovich defense, you don't have to play with d5. You can play with e5, a total dark square strategy instead of a light square strategy. So e4, knight c6, d4, d5, the Nimzovich defense, e5, the Miles approach, Tony Miles, dark square play. Um, uh, okay, so b3, he's tricked me. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't have played it against b3. Maybe it's okay against b3. Anyway, this is transposing into something. I sort of know about with bishop d6. This is actually, I think, the main line here. So knight a3, knight a5, the main line. The tango of the knights here, dancing like this. So with c6 as an idea, and then I have to be careful about things after. Okay, here I, I think I don't mind that. I don't think that's the move, knight c4. I don't think that's the move theoretically. Or is it? I mean, maybe it's been played before. But here it looks as though I'm, you know, going to get a tempo and I'm, I'm being set up for a Greek gift. Um, D5, D takes is probably a bit dodgy. Knight G4. Or maybe I can get away with that. Maybe I can. Maybe I should. But E4 almost threatens to trap the bishop with B5 and D5. In fact, if he played D5... I think b5 if d6 bishop b6 yeah i think e4 threatens to trap the bishop 
d6 d5 b5 d6 bishop b6 his bishop's trapped bishop f6 all right so he's making way but this is greek gift territory or knight g4 territory i think the problem this is h5 and knight g4 Okay, so knight g4 and queen f6, bishop a5, knight g4. There's a lot of interesting possibilities here. Knight g4 and bishop a5. All right, the bishops are a liability, aren't they? Maybe just in case I need rook c8. Or is he going to play knight e4? There's a tactic on the diagonal. Well, especially if my king was there. But at the moment, there's a liability here. Rook c8 for bishop a5 check to win the queen. Surely. I, what, why? why okay. <laughs> okay, what is going on? What is going on here? If he castles queenside, rook c8, he has to get the king out of the way. It is possible to play it like that. But I'm fret okay, but he's not castling there. There's a there's a threat now. Even Bishop H two to pick up the Queen on H four. If he castles H four ninety two, Bishop H two, I pick up the Queen. If he does like something like Queen D two, in fact Bishop A five is very good almost. Bishop C three, Rook C three, Rook C three. Almost. Bishop A five is good. Well, here, bishop a5 is picking up the rook, isn't it? Nearly. No, 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 it's not. He's got the rook protected. Okay, bishop g4, h4 is interesting, pushing the knight back. But also here, a6 again, trying to trap the bishop. I don't know why, but this bishop is asking for it. This bishop is asking for it. If bishop a4, b5, surely... Is there a trick here with knight f5? Some tricky forcing moves. Okay, that bishop's just there for the taking. Right. Okay, so knight g4. And am I not threatening queen h4? If h3, knight f2, I'm going to carve those dark squares. Or queen h4 immediately if rook c7, rook c7. hg, hg is sort of mating, surely. I think I'm going to carve these dark squares, but how? Knight e3 is probably an obvious way. Even if rook c7, queen c7, and I'm taking on g3. I think knight e3 just to carve the dark squares a bit. Maybe that's more flexible than queen h4. I'm not, I'm not sure. Now, if rook c1, which he has played, okay, I can play queen b8 to hold on to g3. Hold on, queen b8. I think the point is he doesn't want me looking at g3 here, but I can take with the other rook or the bishop. Now, if this knight's coming back, where is this knight coming back? Knight c2. For e3, that would that would weaken the dark squares more. Knight c2 and e3. So knight c2 and e3 is 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 looking good to me with tempo and then e3 undermines g3. Okay, okay. Well here uh, okay, queen g3 for rook c2. Or rook c2 with the threat of queen g3, not rook c1, but rook c2. You can't easily attack that rook. So queen f1, queen g3 threatens bishop h3. 
what does he do okay queen b4 for queen f8 i think it's is it mostly harmless or not he's resigned okay i was, I was thinking of yeah okay it looks like okay i'm a rook up anyway yeah that's probably the point i'm a rook up okay thanks okay oops i i had an epiphany okay i'm going to share with you this week because it is a unique week i had an epiphany that one of one of the problems i've been having in the tango is <laughs> that I didn't research it properly. <laughs> that is one of the major problems. When I research it, I realize people magnify the dark square weakness targets. They put a lot more pawns on light squares than I'm doing, a lot of grandmasters. So I'm working with what I'd call micro downsides. The trick is they use a kind of, I spoke with my brother about this, they use a kind of magnifier first. They magnify the extent of the dark square damage yeah this is a very dark squarish system they're magnifying the extent of the dark square damage they put a lot of pawns of the opponent pawns on light squares strategic bishop exchanges they're quite flexible either c5 or g5 to magnify the dark square weaknesses and then when when you think technically later you've already magnified the weaknesses if you see what I mean. So that's that's my epiphany. I haven't been using the magnification concept. Okay, knight h4 here is really dangerous if it's allowed, surely. Bishop g5 is almost a must to stop knight h4. And even Spillman. In fact, there's four British Grandmasters on the black side I've checked out games for in the last few days. Spillman, Sadler, Short and Miles. All four have been playing this uh, at some point the Tango Transpositions. Okay, so Queen C8. If I cancel an F5 here, I think this is a a, a question about the h8 rook not being useful here it's sometimes useful to get a coordination point on f2 with the rook castling you know, you know for f5 that's that's a switch of plan which i think is very useful here for f5 to get this default rook still working as a default rook but with f5 Okay, okay, I'll do something about that. So I think F4 here is looking dangerous. Okay, the knight seems a bit trapped. That's a bit of a snag, isn't it? That knight does seem a bit trapped. I can go to H6 or F6. It's not really trapped at all. And in fact, I'll step it back. I don't matter. It doesn't matter about the double pawns. If he gives up that bishop, it's a magnifier because it's like a bishop without a counterpart. That's a kind of magnifier of the dark square issue. A bishop without a counterpart is a magnifier. More pawns on light squares is a magnifier. Strategic bishop, bishop exchange is a magnifier. I think f4 here is sort of undermining the dark squares. Can I afford that? Or is he just winning a pawn? Maybe I can't afford that. Maybe there's bishop b5. Maybe I'm messing up here. I'm wondering about this e5 square. It would have been nice. Oh, okay. If I take out that knight actually this could be handy to take out this knight to get a bigger grip over f4 yeah if i take it out and take to the knight f4 i'm sealing up f4 so i'm trying to weaken this f4 square so knight f4 here
so that I don't think there's enough light square play I can't get to h3 it's not about light squares at the moment can I play like knight f7 knight f7 might be a threat yeah I think knight f7 just technically Well, this is this is crushing, isn't it? I just queen h three is, is chat mate. All right, thanks. Oops. Okay, dangerous ride. Try b three. And in a way, you could say a magnifier here is for this system is pawns on light squares so I'm, it's a dark square strategy I'd welcome pawns on light squares I don't know about f4 it's it's a bit dangerous f4 and wild but you know maybe sometimes I have fun with it as a sort of gambit here I I don't think I mind this position Especially if he's going to play f6. Hmm. Okay, bishop g7. I think I'm running into stuff which is horrible if I win the exchange. Or do I? I would imagine bishop g7 ef takes. I'm getting punished with queen h4 and it's, it's end of game stuff. So instead, I think I'm going to be a bit more modest here and play knight d4 to try and live to tell the tale. Queen H4 G3. I don't want to indulge. I think I'll be asking for a massacre if I went for that rook. I guess knight e5. Okay, structurally I'll do this, and I've got knight e2 on c5. I think stru structurally this is interesting. Maybe c4, knight c3. Unless he's going to swamp me with c5 and d4 later. I wonder if I can do that a bit more like in a, in a safe way. Or knight g3 here. Huh? Maybe for knight h5. Maybe a completely different plan. The c pawn is, is asking to be swamped with c5, d4, I feel. It's, it's got aspects of a Bononi in reverse. I think I'd prefer to have okay so knight c3 here maybe queen e2 and knight h5 right so if there's an idea of knight h5 is d4 swamping it's possible d4 is a bit swampy for me as if I'm that's the sort of stuff you play against the Benoni and e5 break okay so he's playing very nice for Matic There's a tactical diagonal as well, sometimes, for skewering. That's a bit of a te more technical point. I think another point is, what's another point here? So rook b8, maybe a4. Maybe knight f2 to g4 is interesting as a plan here. Try and weaken the king side. Knight f2 to g4. don't know what else to say at this point I'm just waiting okay D takes all right so knight f2 to g4 I mean in a way I think he's done me favors structurally it looks suspect now what he's just done I'm not sure that release of the tension it's left him with a bad dice structure but he has got that bishop pair that bishop is without the counterpart maybe dangerous sometimes 
Knight g4 though. Also, there's knight f5. I think knight g4 is going to be dangerous because there might be even a knight f5 coming up. He has actually neglected f5. So knight g4 is looking pretty dangerous all of a sudden. For example, okay, why give up that pawn? I don't even want that as a distraction. I don't think I want that pawn. I think I want the queen over here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him have the pawn. <laughs> I want my queen over here, not over here. It seems much more relevant. Frontal target, threatening checkmate over here. Okay, so I'm making it a pawn sack to get the queen over here. Threaten checkmate, but also knight f5 looks dangerous. If queen f7, there's knight h6. If queen f8, well, passive, isn't it? Mind you, I could be running into a pin soon. Well, there's bishop f6 here. I thought he was going to pin with... There's bishop f6. If g6, there's knight h6. Am I missing something here? I hope I'm not. I think there's g6, knight h6. Actually, I'm threatening bishop g7 and knight h6 now. So if he doesn't play g6. Oh, okay. It was worth then keeping the queen over there. Thanks. It was more, a bit more dangerous. Okay. Um, let me fried by fried all today, Friedel. Okay, so knight c6 here. Right. This stops the sort of dark square strategy and it is going into that horrible. London system stuff. That is one strength here. Okay, with with knight c3, we're in different territory. We're in kind of perk territory, which I hate. So well done to him. I hate this territory. I hate this transposition order. I hate this move order. I've been tricked. And I think he has hacked me to death in this variation in the past. So yeah, do I play h6 or bishop g4? Maybe bishop g4. I think this is suspect, this position. Maybe e5 here though, to try and not get hacked to death later if I have the exchange of queens. Um, I've seen this idea in King's Engine sometimes Trying to take on F3 and then hit the dark squares. I think some Andrew Martin video years back or something. Suggestion to hit the dark squares in the King's Engine. It's sort of King's Engine style position. It seems a bit slow, you know, to encourage H3. Well, it doesn't seem that bad for me at all. Is this is this really was this really the entire the desired position? Um knight d four or in fact, you know, knight b four here on oh, this rook c one. Knight knight d four just seems very pleasant. In fact, you know, knight, knight h5 to f5. This, I don't know. I don't know. This looks like a desirable position. I think Nimzovich would love this. A blockade in front of the double pawns uh, later. Okay, uh, so if I castle here, I'm threatening knight takes f3. Uh, okay. All right. Yes, that's the point. Should I have allowed that? Let's do this for bishop e5 and then knight f4. I can still play on the f4 square a little bit. Knight d5 is a bit of a pain for c7. I suppose ideally maybe c5 isn't a wasted move, or is it? All right, can I get to play um, knight f4? 
Okay, can I play C6 here anyway? What's the big deal on playing C6? Knight E7, can't see it. Maybe there's a C3 coming up. Maybe Knight E6 after. Right, is there a Knight F4 coming up? Knight C3, Knight F4, is there a, gives rise to Knight E2. Okay, he has got the bishop pair. He has got rid of his double pawns. So I suppose in theory, oh, also he's, he's got bishop d4. Oh man, he's going to win a pawn. No, I'm, I'm not paying attention. Muppets. I can play. No, haven't been paying attention. It's going to be a pawn up. It's going to be grovel. It's grovel. I can try and blockade. Ah, it's grovel territory. Okay, c4, b6. At least there's kings over there. I don't think. Um, take this far. Maybe rookie two. Try and get some counterplay. C4, b6. Or g5 later for knight f4. Knight f6 immediately. b5 to stop c4. If I want to gang up with knight f6 and rook d8 on d5. Do I do that here? Can I get my pawn back? Rookie seven, a six. All right. King g7, knight d5, or knight d5 immediately. Does knight d5 run into something horrible? Or is this rook and pawn ending slightly favourable? If it, a6 for h3, past the h pawn over here, past the a pawn over there. I oh, wouldn't I play rook takes d5. So A pawn, B pawn versus H pawn, G pawn. Okay, he's got dangerous pass pawn potential there. After that, can I do this to encourage F3? F3, Rook H5. Okay. F5, F4, try and get my pass pawns immediately. He's going to win A6, I just need to get my pass pawns working. G5, H5, G4. How quick are they? So Rook B2. It's Rook C4. I played G3 for G2. That means I've, I've got G g2 to rook c4 he's got rook b3 rook e2 b7 rook e8 do i play g3 or not oh I don't know actually. B seven and rook c eight. Are these two pass pawns winning there? We get the same sort of position. Rook 
position. I'm saying queen here. If I just take the options, I think I'll be getting mated. Let's see how this goes. Can I throw in a check? Hold on a sec. on the clock for a draw there. No, yeah, what, what, oh, let's have a quick look there. It should have been equal somehow, apparently, F4. Oh, is that a mistake? Was Rook E2... This is just technical stuff. Rook E3. No, white's still better. These pawns were always looking dangerous anyway. Yeah, okay. But maybe there's a way of nearly equalizing here. Yeah. But I think what I played is, is on the losing side then. It must be on the losing side. Too slow, too slow, far too slow. Yes, it's all too slow. Yeah, instructive. Sort of. Gonkin Paul. So that was that off there on the clock. Why is that? Yeah, that was very good. So Bishop G2 and Castle. So D3 and Knight D2. Queen E2, maybe for E4. Or A3 first, then E4. Looks as though that's a pleasant position. A3 and E4. I'll kick this back. A for an E4. Knight H5, King H2. Okay, so this looks... Okay, the Knight D5 to E3. So may, maybe not... Yeah. So maybe a different plan here. G4. If e5, f5, and try and get the knight to g3 later. Yeah, I think this whole e5, it runs into this knight d5. It looks nasty, sort of. I think there's a more interesting encouragement for e5, for f5. That would be a difficult. I mean, you could try for a dark square blockade later, I suppose. If he doesn't do anything here, that's interesting. Do I actually play f5? I don't know if f5 is mostly harmless. e5. 
five knight d five is on f four as well. It's not just e three. That's thing that's out of the question at the moment. Oh, what's this? No, 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 no. E five is now in the equation. There's no ninety five. That means I can get the e four square free of charge knight e four. Well, I'll just take it here. I think F five here. Ninety four. Going to F six. Knight F six looks very good. For Queen F two to H four after. Or or just taking Armstrong. Okay. Um well, well yeah, okay. Um yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Is there dynamic potential somewhere on the G file? I'm looking for it. King eight seven rook G eight. Um, this bishop is blunted. Maybe B4 to try and get the bishop out later on the diagonal. Bit B4. Okay, so B4 here for this diagonal. The king's a nice target on the diagonal. Well, B5 here is the rook. The rook goes. It's not. There's no going to be. There's no rook g8 anymore. There's also a queen e5 to swap off the queens. Queen e5. Being boring. Okay. Hmm. I think the knight sack earlier was seemed a bit dodgy to me. Rook H six, Rook G six, coming up. C three opens up the bishop. Okay, oh, I could have taken that. Yeah. Take this now. Okay. Oh. Uh. Oh, uh, yeah. For Rook H eight. Yeah, I think it was a bit of a dodgy night sack earlier. Jacko sixty five. Um I thought here is is well dodgy, slightly dodgy. It's either well dodgy or slightly dodgy. I, I, uh, I don't know. Hmm. He takes the thing is it ties down, I suppose, the bishop. Aha. Uh -huh. In this case, I think d3 is interesting. Was there knight f stakes? Or knight c3 for d3? That's interesting. And this is, is there a bishop b4 coming up? Bishop b4 a3. 
I might actually be threatening something here. Although, okay. Bishop G4. Uh, this is looking quite dodgy, actually. Um, yeah. Actually, Bishop G4. Okay. Am I sacking a knight now on Selney? But I've got the G file. Okay. Maybe there's things like knight d5 there. Yeah, this wasn't my intention, by the way, but it's it's a road. Um, and this has got rook e8 coming up. Maybe he's got rook e8, maybe e4, d8, knight e4. So rook e8, e4. I lose that rook. Oh, I think I've pushed things too badly here. Yeah. Too much. Yes, it looks like I've overcooked. Oh, cook things. <coughs> I shouldn't play the more reliable opening. Change now. Bishop f4, queen g2, yeah, losing lots of material. You know, I feel I feel a bit dumb with this whole opening now. That feeling of dumbness is setting in. Hmm. Queen G four. Queen here. That's not a great parking spot for the Queen. I think actually I wanted to play for f5. If there was anything to play for there, it was um, f5. Okay. Oh, F5. He's going to kill my dream for F5 immediately. Put this knight over here. Hey. It means I've got access to G7. Is that a small concession? Four. 
has knight c5 here for knight e6. Maybe that's worth trying. I do feel dumb with the whole opening now. I've, I've somehow... This is the problem playing rubbish openings on bullet and you sort of experiment on a longer time control. It's best not to play rubbish even in casual, I think. It creates this temptation to play the rubbish later on in a more serious setting. Uh, I think that's the problem. So knight is coming back here. Maybe. Well, it's possible I should really research the B3 and play the solid lines, which probably exist. All right, this is interesting. Is he letting me back in the game? That's very generous. Queen E3. Have I been let back in the game? Or not? I don't know. Queen D1, Queen... C1? I don't think I should play B3 after this in the rest of the session. Uh, I don't think I enjoyed this game particularly. Um, uh, okay, so. E5 here. Is that doing anything? Oh, that's okay. I think he's ruining things. He's gone to ruin things with that, unfortunately, for him. But <sighs> yeah, no, that was really oh, oh, I, I'm embarrassed how I played that opening. Black's already much better after knight c3. Black's already much better here. This Black's already slightly better, so it's already dangerous to play f4. A normal move, like bishop b5. Bishop b5. This is my bullet rubbish spilling into a blitz game. Yeah, but bishop b5, I think, might be actually a solid, in inverted commas, way of playing it. Unless this is getting smashed. But that looks a lot more solid. Okay. Prom knight. All right. Let's try and play my other crap knight c3 opening. <laughs> So d3 here. Now I have had good games from this gambit. I've beaten um, one of the top GMs at Bullet because I had a, actually a decent position, I felt, with this gambit. I think this is underestimated. All right, g file as well. Well, this is what the discourage castling queen side went, is it? No, I, I kind of. This is one of my little secret pack gambits, which I don't think I mind a longer time control. Especially three minute. Don't think I mind this little gambit. I smashed that Zogulski, this Russian GM, in a bullet game. Totally massacred him with a false chapmate when he cast the kingside with a sort of G file like this. It was great fun. Uh, here, I don't know if. Uh, but how do I actually progress my situation here? Uh-huh. I think the key is to maintain a small clock advantage as well. Not to be too much of a perfectionist. 
Okay. He's over there. Right, maybe see Fred stop all this night before business. The bishop without the counterpart. Somehow I should have stuff on light squares. Oh, great. No, if he takes, I take here. He doesn't want to take here. All right. Maybe I want to. Do I move, move that away or not? Just put my king a bit safer. Maybe double on the d5. Maybe rook d5. Double. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm not sacking the bishop, though. I'm going to torture him on these light squares. I've got the bishop without the counterpart. Surely I can just slowly melt this pawn structure with a4, bishop d5. a4 here. With his king there. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> come on. Are you testing my tactical, technical skills now, Phil? This this must be a one position fundamentally. This is a one position fundamentally. It's just a matter of technical stuff. Surely. Bishop d5. B4. Well, the A file is dangerous, right? I can double on the A file here. Knight C8. But he's losing some time here on rook a8. Okay, so a full queen d3. Maybe it's not that easy. Queen e1 for c4. No, okay, okay. I'm starting to believe him. Okay. Oh no. Okay. What about f4? F4, different target. F7. F4 has just sprung to mind. Forget a file. F seven target. Oh no, okay, okay. I wonder if I left a horrible check from there. Yeah, I think I might have blundered somewhere there. Thanks. Um, I think this is a Kasparov wannabe. Oh, there's some Twitter stuff about Kasparov I noticed this morning saying. Kasparov was saying he had it harder in his day. I think something to that effect. <clears throat> okay, is this is this going to be a London system torture scenario? Is the solid London system triangle of boredom going to be set up? It is, isn't it? I'm going to play this common trap for e5, e4. So if I get e4, I'll be very excited with the dark squares. There was actually a Paul Kaz against Fisher game where Fisher encouraged e4. And later had a fairly clear-cut dark square strategy. Uh, okay, so 94. This is a fairly cut, uh Clear cut dark square strategy, you just extend the scope of the bishop. Whoever takes on f4, I've got a nice bishop, I've got a nice d4. I don't think the double pawns are of great significance. g5, h5, g4, a bit squishy. That d4 square for knight d4, tortures c2. I think, yeah, you know, h5, g4 looks good here.
And so rook d1, rook e8. I don't want to keep some tension going in the position. Rook d1, rook e8, and then g4 after. I suppose f4 is slightly um, vulnerable. Might have to do something about f4 here. I mean, bishop e5. Suspend hostilities with bishop e5, which blockades e4 as well. I don't think that bishop can be touched that easily on e5 after knight h2. So knight h2, bishop e5. Probably build up with king g7, rook h8, queen h4. I think counterplay is kind of low for white there. On knight h2, bishop e5, I think counterplay is low. Okay, there is a knight d3 trick if the knight's going that way. There's a knight d3 trick if the bishop vacates d3. Does that take too long? So bishop e2, king g7. Knight d3 immediately, rook h8, knight e5, knight e5, queen f4. Apart from that, but if I get time for king g7 here, rook h8, I think that's pretty terminal because of queen h4. It's pretty crude and effective. There is a dark square bishop without the counterpart here. White well, should be fundamentally suffering on dark squares a bit more than usual. Okay. I don't think so. In fact, here I think queen c5, king g8, rook h8 is pretty terminal. Queen c5, king f1, queen f2 is mates. King h8, king g7 for rook h8 is pretty terminal. Yeah, no, 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 this doesn't look right. Queen c5 looks pretty vicious. I was desperately looking once at how Fisher handles, okay, the knight, but I'll go for the chat, mate. How Fisher handled the London system. I just couldn't find any examples. People were not used to setting up the triangle of boredom in the Fisher era. I was looking for an answer, you know, to the London system in Fisher's games. The closest I came was this Paul Carres game. But, you know, he, as I say, it was totally simplified for Fisher because of this E4 business. All right, thanks, uh, Anglesia. Okay. Dangerous ride again. Okay. Um, I'm going to play respectable opening here because I don't like having a complete. It's embarrassing to have a completely lost position. I think I can have a few moves here without a completely lost position if I play c4. This boring stuff. So d3, knight g e2. Botvinnik will be proud. I think it is called the Botvinnik system. So king h2, bishop e3, a3, b, okay. It's a standard plan, isn't it? a3, king, rook, it's the standard boredom plan. a3, rook, b1, b4. I think one of the fundamental ideas is to sort of increase your number of central pawns in the English. So if you can chip away at black central pawns with b4, try and distract them away. Try and get an end game later with more central pawns. I mean, that's a fundamental idea I've read somewhere. Okay, on the other hand, here, you know, I think I can play for f4. It's not that, you know, if he ever takes it, it's again dismantling the center. But if he doesn't, okay, there's a dark square blockade. If I ever get f5, knight h7. Um, but the thing is, do I have to commit to f5 immediately? Or is that h4 anyway to the rescue strategically? Before the dark, strategic dark square bishop exchange, knight h7 h4. Uh, have that birds in hand. Okay. 
actually I'm not, I'm not really sure what I'm talking about that what bird what hand sorry knight h7 h4 at least I struck okay what 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 <laughs> what what is this what is this I didn't expect that I what what is this <laughs> what is this no this this can't be happening what what is this g4 this looks unsound even by my unsound st standards of unsoundness this looks remarkably on the unsound side i have a plan just g4 knight g3 to e4 if i have a knight on e4 i think that's end of game strategically for black g4 knight g3 to e4 with my extra knight in a central square blockading e5 G4 unless he's going to slice me on the diagonal unexpectedly when I'm not looking it's possible uh do I do I trust he's going to play E4 with a big dangerous position um uh I'll risk it he should play E4 I think this is his only chance no all right if i get my king off here e4 is going to have to be played here otherwise knight g3 to e4 he's going to have to liberate that bishop otherwise that bishop's not going to see this diagonal there's going to be no tactics for the bishop on the diagonal oh well he's condemned the bishop i'm afraid he's condemned the bishop I think Leela, you know, would have liberated pawn sack. Sometimes Leela liberates pawn sack, you know, to keep those bishops active. You know, Leela neural network. And Leela likes the blockading. Okay. I think this bishop's not happy now. Bishop d2, queen f3 threatens knight f6 for queen d5 anyway. In fact, I'll play that as the first threat. Knight f6 for queen d5. Bishop d2, rook f1, h4, g5. This looks crushing. But the immediate threat is knight f6. Okay. So rook a, f1, h4, g5. In fact, I don't even know why I'm doing that routinely. It looks cozier to have the rook over here with the rest of the gang. I don't think it's that functional to have the rook there. Okay. say here except it looks you know awesome you know g6 queen h5 looks like that's checkmating uh potentially um oh okay okay or well, g takes even you know this rook might as well use the rook and to stop the king escaping you know queen h5 uh, um yeah queen h5 Maybe king e7 though. Well, on king e7, knight f6, I'm going to get that g7 square. I just take out, I'm going to have to depart with my knight though, that's the sad thing. But I get that g7 square. Do I really want to do that? Oh, I suppose I want to do that. Oh, I love the knight though. Oh, crikey. What about just bishop g5? Keep the knight for a moment. It's a beautiful knight. I, I, I think maybe it's a sin. To not have that knight on e4. Uh, okay. 
Okay, so rook g7 here. And that rook's unprotected if the king steps back. The knight is actually holding d6. So it's not just beautiful, it's holding d6. Okay. Okay, thanks. Dangerous ride. Okay. Yon. 606. So here, um, yeah. You see, this is he's ma this magnified my dark square strategy. Another pawn on light squares magnifies dark square strategy. All I need to do is get rid of these bishops, and the game should play itself. <laughs> now I'm being cheeky here. I've analysed the death this opening the last few days. I think I know what I'm talking about now. With the latest Stockfish 11, I've been analysing this tango to death. I know everything about the tank. No, I don't know. Just just a few variations, though. A few variations. But I have looked at C4 stuff. And C4 stuff brings even more STEM games into the equation. Yeah? And you might ask me why. Yeah? Because before, I wouldn't have even mentioned this. There's more, even more STEM games because of the move order D4, Knight, F6, C4, Knight, C6. So that often results in these positions anyway. So h6 is not really going to give me the bishop without the counterpart, right? Or is he? It's possible, isn't it? Right. So here, uh, b6 is, is is a concession, which is interesting. So we can f4, because this knight's wanting to be justified, be able to hop into f4. So overall, I like if they take on c5 to get the knight option to f4. Okay. So this means, you know, bishop d7 and queen c8 if he castled over here. Maybe it's discouragement. He might think I play for b5 later if he castles queen side. So I think a6 is a reasonable waiting move. It might be useful in conjunction with maybe taking on e3 and then b5 later. Or bishop d7 works with that as well if white castles queen side. Bishop d7, bishop e3, b5. Okay, there's an extra dark square weakness here. But is a5 useful? I give up the b5 square? Okay. This is magnifying the dark square strategy even further. Statistically, the number of pawns on light squares is magnificent now. A strategic bishop exchange... I think the game should kind of it should be solid even if even if a major computer was playing white after the strategic bishop exchange but bishop d7 queen c8 bishop h3 so <laughs> I would imagine Bishop H3 is, is very crushing because, you know, if he takes on C7 after, I have Knight G4 and Knight H4. I just don't think that's stoppable with the Queen on uh, B3. Just Knight G4 and Knight H4. The Tango Knight's a killer for Knight H4. Okay, that knight's pinned to the queen though. If takes he moves the knight, that's pinned to the queen. He's hitting h3. Okay. Good stuff. Okay. 
if I play bishop d7, he takes here, takes here, this is f4. I may be underestimating what this c7 is a real pain otherwise I might want to take on e4 at some point mind you it's a double pawn you know so on knight takes if we, if we end up with knight e4 knight c7 he's just taken out a double pawn there's rook b8 his knight could go back to b5 yeah, let's go over it. Or well, getting getting the queens off. It's a bit boring to get the queens off. Less chance of mating the opponent. Okay, but I'm thinking that's a bait for this whole line to take the center pawn. Okay, no queens off. Pin the knight, knight g5, knight h3, knight f4. If I get a knight to f4, but I think I want to pin this knight first before doing anything. Is it possible f5, f4 is useful? Maybe f5. Alright, so queen h6 may be friend. King h7, does that parry that? I think I want Queen D7 as a sense of security if he's doubling up rooks or a rook sack at some point. Okay, G5 here maybe. Is that crazy? I've got G6 covered. Why not just Queen D7 on F3, Knight G5. If F4, there's Knight F3. Check, no, there isn't. Okay, I'll run that through again. Queen d7, f3, there's knight f6 anyway. So bishop g6, knight g6. g6 here, is that out of the question? Or g5, is that crazy? What about just knight f6? Isn't that playing it safe? Knight f6 without creating too many uh, pawn weaknesses potentially. So hitting the bishop. If he doubles, knight takes protects g7 as well. If he plays bishop e2 here, f4, queen f4, knight. Check, I win the queen. f4 is a move. There's no immediate check on either e4 or d3 there. f4 for f3 looks good. f4 here. There is maybe bishop d3, king h8. Okay, so if he takes... Okay, so king h8 here. There's no queen e4, right? The trouble is with this position, if I ever have knight... Well, knight g4... I don't think that helps. What does it do? All right, yeah, that was, yeah, that was interesting. Okay, so, uh, Patrick. Okay, is Patrick around? Patrick around one elephant, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants. I think let's play some other people now. Realize 
is a new okay c4 slightly more solid than usual one elephant two elephants three elephants four elephants five elephants i'm gonna have to abort it's getting a bit stricter on the uh there's a queue here otherwise i would take it to 10 seconds There's only like seven minutes, about seven minutes left, so let's try and get another game in. Treasure. Treasure around. All right, again. <laughs> One elephant, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants. Okay. Guys. Oh, okay. You made it. <laughs> you made it. You made it. I'm being brutal on the, on the, on the countdown. I'm, I'm being too brutal. So I'm only playing like this because of the B3 embarrassment earlier. I've decided to switch to have a decent position to start off with, just to make it look respectable to start off with. <laughs> before I before I indulge in uh, terrible moves later, uh, which weaken the position and blah blah blah. blah. Okay, so Knight G E2 and Castle. Is he, is he going to dissuade this? No, Queen C8 would have dissuaded castling. So King H2, F4. This is a nice plan anyway. It's a nice reusable little template plan. F5, Knight F4. That's even better because the downside is usually a Knight going to E5. But he sorted out that downside. Okay, okay, it's a pawn sack though. It is a pawn sack, or maybe it's not even a pawn sack now. So I'm, it's a basic squishing, then knight g3, g5 for f6. It's a basic squish strategy. In fact, you know, knight d5 threatens mate sometimes if a bishop's on h8. Knight h4, knight e5. Do I play g5 immediately? That's. I think I do actually, because I want to be able to play knight d5. So f6 and knight d5 threatens knight e7, which is a bit of a killer, isn't it? Because it's at least winning the exchange. So I'm threatening checkmate. Okay, I'm at least winning the exchange. The only slight down here is if he does sack the exchange, there might be a question about this knight. It's not really a big deal, I think. Um, I might just want to. In fact, just take on d4 and play bishop f3. Oh, he's got bishop h3. Okay. All right, there's, there's some issue left if he plays rook e8. Have I been disconnected? Am I still here? Oh dear, have I lost connection? Whoops. Have I, or is it my opponent? All right, sorry, Teja. Um, okay, Mr. ACZ, a three minute game. So we got a tango. Pawns on light squares. I don't mind the G3 because it gives me a nice bite usually with H5, H4. Okay, you might take care of this to keep on bishop. Mm. I think maybe f5 or h4. Does let me have quite a few little treats here? Bishop without the counterpart, it's a magnifier. h4, I don't know if that's some sort of magnifier, but f5 on top of this. 
and this active rook. I thought maybe he was going to play h4. Not to let my rook become active. Okay, while well, that pawn's pinned, it forces h takes. Okay, this kind of gives me my queen some squares to work with. Okay, um, f4 maybe here. This looks delicious, dark square strategy. So far. Okay, maybe bishop d7. I get that pin for fg. If I get that pin reactivated with bishop d7, trying to encourage this to get the pin reactivated. Bishop d7 is also queen e8. If I really want to try and get the pin reactivated. But on top of that, okay, there's no gf, that looks terrible. Uh, there's a potential for queen f6, but not yet, I think. I think the key consideration is trying to get the pin. Because even if queen g3, there's knight f4, threatening knight e2. So I think that's the key to consideration. If this pin re emerges. Alright, queen e8 here. Threatening bishop a4. Trying to reactivate the pin. Is it a tactically loose piece on knight c3? dc, bc, bishop c5. It is tactically loose piece. And let me just encourage him. I don't want this chain reaction to my king. I just want him to give me the pin back. Right, he's giving me the pin back. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. The pin to be back. Pin and win. All right, so now FG. Or in fact, yeah, there's Queen C7. Maybe just for a moment longer. Uh, so FG is threatened, and now Knight F4 looks crushing for Knight E2 checkmate. So Knight E2 is threatening checkmate. There's Knight F5, King F6. Knight f5, king f6. I think that's safe enough. If there's no other continuance there, all right, queen e7. All right, queen d7 for knight h3. Alright, queen h6. There is some dark square torture, but it, it's certainly not what I imagined. Alright, f4 here. E three or Queen G six, Queen G six. That's pinned. Still pinned. Yeah, no, I think I let him in tactically there. Unfortunately, despite all my efforts, I think I did leave him tactically with an opportunity or two or three. Let's have a quick look. Is that the case? All right, rook h2. Okay, rook h2 is a key move, it seems. Yeah, because if f takes, there's rook g2 uh, with that pin knight. Rook h2, I think. Yeah, some. I'm letting him back in with queen d7. Yep, he's back in the game with queen g2. Oh, queen h6, I don't know. It still, think, it still thinks it's slightly better for me. f5? Is that e4? Is that the point e4? Or bishop d5? All 
all right okay i uh, hope you enjoyed today um thanks all right uh, have a good rest of the day um see you next week thanks very much oh yeah if you're on youtube yeah uh, comments questions like shares subscribe with the notification bell really appreciate it thanks again cheers then